I'm Lee Lyers, and this is a Deliverance Deferred. Hello, I'm Lee Lyers. Welcome to a Deliverance Deferred, where we take a look at the many failures, falsehoods, and fabrications of Andrew Caldwell. Today, we will be revisiting an over-the-phone interview done with one of Andrew Caldwell's aunts back in November 2014, right after his deliverance went viral. Hello, Latrice. Thank you for phoning in. Before we get started, I would like to clarify that you are not the aunt that raised him, correct? My mother raised Andrew. And I think when my mom died, he just lost the world. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest with you, he just feel like he lost the world. But at the same time, my sister... My, not his mother, but my sister, his aunt, mm-hmm. took, took up and, you know, stepped up and raised Andrew along with a couple of other my nieces, you know, uh, that was his sister, his sibling. Okay, thank you. What can you tell me about Andrew's childhood? We always have thought he was going to be gay because he was a little boy. And it's crazy, mm-hmm. but my mom used to, uh, she just used to spoil Andrew. I mean, in her eyes, Andrew couldn't do no wrong. He didn't tell my All he could have did was just say, Grandmama, and she believed him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where we could be looking right. When I tell you, my mother really spoiled him. Still now, Andrew, tell me people that uh, somebody at a church molested him. So Andrew never, ever, ever attended a funeral. Never attended a funeral home or anything. Nobody, he never, nobody ever babysitted him other than my mother. We was not allowed to go over anybody's house. Nobody was able to come and spend. We couldn't spend a night over anybody's house, any of that. Half the family members, once they got grown, weren't even allowed to come back. Andrew just, I don't know what the hell he's doing and saying. Andrew has never been in no foster care. Andrew never, ever, ever been molested by a family member or no one else. Ma'am, I have to stop you right there as I will not allow you to make such bold declarations. Unless you were with Andrew for every single moment of the day, you have no ideas to whether he was molested or not. I have always made my disdain for the Scamicus very clear. But no one deserves to be told they are lying about being molested unless there is definitive proof to the contrary. According to a 2006 study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one in six boys in the United States were sexually abused before age 18. And the Children's Assessment Center acknowledges that race and ethnicity are key factors, with black children being almost twice more likely to experience child sexual abuse than white children. In nearly 95% of cases reported to the police, the offender was a family member or acquaintance. So, no, you can only say he wasn't molested to your knowledge. You cannot say he was never molested because you don't know that. Now, let's move on. What is your opinion regarding his proclamation that he has been delivered from homosexual? I hate to say it, but whoever these church people are, that they are making us... When, when, it, when the stuff hits the fan, it's Andrew that's going to be in the worst trouble. Because he, Andrew is simple and slow, don't get me wrong. Andrew has a learning disability. And these people have preyed on him, pry on him, and taken advantage of him. Because I'm going to be honest with you, all I know is this man named John, whom he shared a home with for the last couple of years. And Andrew riding around, there's a whole lot of stuff that's not looking good to me and looking right to me. At the same time, I know this guy, John, whatever his name is, I can't think of his last name at this moment. Uh... He's behind a whole lot of this stuff that Andrew's doing. Do you believe that Andrew and John are in a relationship? I think he is. But Andrew always has said, uh, I'm not gay, I'm not gay. I have just received word that both John and Andrew have called in to give their side of the story. Please hold for a moment, Latrice, and I will return to you shortly. Hello, is this John? Hello, John. Can you give us a bit more information, such as why you allowed Andrew to live with you? Oh, he asked me to. He, uh, he, he had told me that uh, he, uh, he would put out of his house. Interesting. So, can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with the Andrew? Um, more or less like just a, a, a friend, you know, like a, a older, I'm a, a much older person than he is, so we have nothing in common. Uh, right now I'm sticking to And you and Andrew have never been in any type of physical relationship? No. Never. When first I'm delivered, and when I wasn't homosexual, I never looked at an old man. I would never touch an old man. Like I said, I dated, so I, dated uh, I dated a couple of football players, I dated church people, so I would never, ever date an old person. That's nasty. Well, 
Thank you for that answer, Andrew. It was elucidating, if not a bit uncharitable. While we have you here, could you please let us know what your source of income is? We have it on authority that you claim to live off of royalties from your books, and we know that couldn't possibly be true. Hello? Andrew? OK, well, I guess Andrew has left. John, could you answer that question? What is Andrew's source of income? Well, I really can't talk about that because of the type of job that I have. Well, what, what he does, he does a lot of uh, uh, handyman type of work, like painting, building. Thank you very much, John, for calling in. You have a wonderful evening. Hello, Latrice. I just spoke with Andrew and John and could not receive satisfying answers. Do you know if it is true that Andrew receives royalties from his books? You've never seen one of his books, have you? So, what do you think his job is or where he gets his money from? Andrew's driving around in Jaguar. How you, he got like at least 50 to 60 credit cards. Andrew just recently been arrested for fraud. I don't know what the hell he's doing. But all these people that he's affiliated with are coming from this church that he was going to. Andrew does not have a job. He never had a job. I'm, I'm going to ebonic for you. He never had a job. Ain't never had a job. You know? Um, from my understanding, um, two, maybe a year or two years ago, he was, I thought he was working at the killer home, but they was like, no, he didn't work there. He was just down there a lot. But he was grown. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was like 19 years old. So it appears he does have some type of affiliation with the funeral home despite you saying the contrary earlier when speaking on the molestation allegations. I have to be honest with you, Latrice. I question your motives for wanting to do this interview. Most of the information you have provided is information you heard from your niece, not Andrew himself. So what was your purpose? What is the point that you wanted to make clear? He's just a liar. We all lived in the same house and grew up in the same house. There was no way. None of that was able to happen. Ah, so your purpose was to refute the molestation allegations. Thank you for calling, Latrice. Lee, back to you. There you have it. And remember, what happens to a deliverance deferred? Does it smell like onions baking in the sun? Or wiggle like his breasts when he's on a run? Does it switch like he does walking down the street? Or shrivel like his hairline does in defeat? Does it run away like he does from the lies that he's told? Or does it implode? Thanks for watching.